Uh, Charlie Gasparino here with a read on all of this. What do you think? Well, uh, just I'll tell you what people are telling me. Um, I think there was a report either in the Journal of the Times today which said that every economic advisor to the president, except for one, meaning um, Larry Kudlow, Mnuchin, even Lighthizer, right. that they are against these round of tariffs, the, 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 the position he's taken with China, except for one guy, and that's Peter Navarro. And now, the, they were against it because they argue we're making incremental progress. Yes, we're making, right? and, and by the way, we're, we're engaging tit for tat trade wars, which right, never right. end well. You know, it's going to impact our farmers and, you know, go down the line. Every, every, everybody that, that needs to, that, that is looking to do business with China, selling stuff there because uh, they're going to retaliate. And Trump did the tr he wants to do the tariffs anyway. Right. And I think, listen, I personally like Peter Navarro. I spoke, I speak with him on the phone. He, 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 but the, the markets, the, the, the major investors think that he is ill-equipped to be giving major trade policy, okay? They look at him when he was on cr with Chris Wallace this weekend, and he started to argue the president's point, which is the point that you said was absurd on Saturday, that, you know, the Chinese will pay for tariffs. I mean, when you get, when you start arguing that to rational investors uh, who know that tariffs are passed on to the consumers, either directly or indirectly, and, and that's the guy running the show who has the presence here, that's, 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 that, that's equivalent to hitting the sell button. The, algor the algorithms kick in and start selling. And I think uh, between what you said, which was trending on Twitter on Saturday, I noticed when I was uh, drinking my coffee and I just saw Neil Cavuto. We tried to have you on, and then you, it just kept going to voicemail. Yeah, um, my fine. phone is off the hook on Saturday mornings. Uh, but, but, you know, uh, between what you did and I think what, what, what Wallace did and then what was reported, I believe it was the journal, I think the triple whammy of, you know, president who thinks the Chinese actually pay for tariffs, the guy who's defending him publicly, because Larry Kudlow would never defend that. I mean, he can't. It just makes no sense. But someone is ideologically well, rigid. Well, their view, their official view, as you've reported, is that this has not had a deleterious effect on the consumer. And, it, and, and, and take a look at the strength of the economy and the consumer. Right. Um, but I think what you were reporting last week is this latest waves of tariffs could be more immediate, right? Could be more immediate. And we don't, and by the way, the markets are, are factoring it in. And it, listen, I don't know if it's going to impact consumers, if the, the net net will be worse because we do have tax cuts, we do have regulatory right. cuts. You know, I don't know where it comes all out. But the markets. Don't worry that it's offsetting whatever gain you're Right. But that, well, that's another thing. But the yeah. markets are ha clearly having a debate about it. And I'll yeah. tell you, leaving economic policy to Peter Navarro. Is not something that market makers like. You know, investors, big investors, and now no, they don't like it. Our Charlie Brady, who you and I know, yeah. is a genius. Right. He is saying right now the Dow is on track for its uh, worst day since last December. What do you make of that? Yeah, well, that's when you know you had uh, the Fed tightening. No, I'm sorry, since January 3rd. Uh, it, it, it's got to be down more than 2.37 percent. But that's when you had. That and by the way, that, that's when you had the Fed tightening on both ends, That's both right. on the short end and the long end. We were coming after that disastrous month of December. Right, and you had trade stuff heating Got up. It. You had the double whammy. So. But it's not affecting all, like, the deals that could be in the works, like CBS, Viacom. What's going right. on there? Um, that, that's, but there? There are other factors why that is right. going to happen, and I think it's going to happen. It could happen as early as Thursday, from what I understand. Um, I think it's a 50-50 chance, what I'm being told, that finally Sherry Redstone from Sumner Redstone's daughter, who's essentially controlling She's leading the company, right, right. National Amusements, which owns, which has the controlling shares in both of these uh, companies, these big media companies. She wants, us, she's wanted to see this merger since 2016, for a lot of reasons that we've reported and written about on FoxBusiness.com. It's finally at the stage where it's happening. As we were first to report, Bob Backish, if and when this happens, will be the CEO. Joe Ionella will essentially, that's the CEO of CBS now, will essentially right. continue to run CBS and be his nominal number two through a transitionary pro uh, process. It's unclear whether he's going to stay long term, but she's going to merge these two together. The question is, what happens next? Okay, so just, just for a little, just, just let me say, there's no formal agreement, no matter what you kind of, what, what the journal reported on Friday or Thursday is exactly what we've been saying. There's a set of working principles. Among those working principles is management structure, backish running it. There's, no, there's nothing on paper that says this, has to ha this is happening right now. 
Uh, it may happen in the next 24, 48 hours, but right now, nothing really on paper. But I am told it's a 50-50 chance when both companies uh, report earnings on Thursday that this thing could be formally announced. And then the question is, what comes next? There's half the people I talk to in media say, well, CBS and Viacom together, they got some scale. They may go out and buy something, like a discovery. Mm. The other half say, no, 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 no. They're going to sell to somebody. Sherry Redstone wants a cash out of her, of her empire. She, wants, she has to leave a legacy to her kids, to her grandkids. And they're going to look to sell to someone. The problem that they have, like a lot of media companies, there's not a lot of buyers right now. Tech is not really stepping up to the plate, providing yeah, the they're, cash. They're hanging on to their cash for the time. Or, being, right? or they're making their own content. Got it. Right. So Got that's it. where we are right now. This week could be a big week, though. All right, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Threw a lot at it. He always handles it flawlessly. Charlie Gasparino.